seven kilometres to the south of Norfolk, we've got this beautiful big volcanic island called Phillip Island. You know, it's an amazing place. It's a myriad of colours because um, early on in the history of Norfolk, rabbits, goats and pigs were released out there. And so they've denuded the place. There was not a scrap of vegetation left on it and all the topsoil washed away. So there's very, very little for plants to cling on to. There was quite a few endemic species out there, um, flora and fauna. Some of those amazingly have clung on over the last few decades and making a really, really good comeback now, which is good to see. It's such a rugged environment, you know, it's hills and valleys and red dirt and yellow and blue and it's an incredible place. We've had our botanists and our uh, insect and spider people, and especially our herpetological team, our reptile crew, going out to Phillip Island. Uh, two of the most special animals in this part of the Pacific are lizards. One is a skink and one is a gecko, and they're found only essentially on Phillip Island. Once we uh, jumped off onto the rock platform, we made our way around to the rope section um, and hiked and climbed up to where there's a really wonderful parks hut. We'd been told that uh, you could find them around the park hut underneath some of the wooden and metal boards. Um, so uh, Dane, Trembath and myself were really excited basically once we landed. Boards were lifted and it was just a quickly grab before things can run away. So we're really excited to see both the skink and the gecko and some gecko eggs underneath the um, material. And it was just a really good start to the trip. There's a different fauna to be found on Phillip Island from Norfolk Island because it is so isolated and there are just things there that, things on Norfolk Island that aren't on Phillip Island. So more predators are here on Norfolk Island that you don't get out on Phillip Island. So the insects have been able, different insects have been able to thrive there. Getting specimens from Phillip Island is really important for the collection to fill in some gaps in our collection that we just simply don't have much from there. So. It's a unique place and it's challenging to get to, so there isn't many expeditions out there and we're very lucky to be able to go. So much of the fauna of an island like this is the really small stuff. It's the insects and spiders and that's really what makes these forests and habitats tick. Much of what they are collecting will only be illuminated once we get back to the museum and are able to study it fairly closely. However, it does seem like our team has already turned up new species of spiders, um, quite distinct lineages like families of spiders that weren't noticed here on Norfolk previously. And surely we are gonna have a number of new insect species from this survey as well. So in the evening, um, we went out with Mark Scott, who is our guide. We were lucky enough to find some geckos feeding on the flax flowers. So we've managed to increase what we know that the geckos feed on to include flax, um, pine sap, and also um, some of the pig face. Having specimens allows us to have this kind of verified record that we can go back to and look at to just confirm that it was that species there and when. So the collections act as a biological library in time and space that let us know exactly when and where a species was, who collected it. Um, we're also taking genetic samples from them, so we might be able to, in the future, look at the origins. Phillip Island is a beautiful story because it's, uh, it, it takes us from a place of, of environmental damage all the way through to a place where these native and endemic animals have this place without some of the invasive species that now uh, overrun Norfolk Island. Because of that, some of these animals, the geckos, the lizards, some of the other smaller things, invertebrates like snails and, and insects, they're thriving there.